Before we get started, there's a couple of things you're going to need to know to make sure you get the most out of this training. So we're going to be using kettlebells and sometimes they can get a pretty bad rap for making people's lower back sores or causing injury, but it's usually not the case. So if you're new to kettlebells, it might be worth going and revisiting the unlocking your movement portion of the training to allow you to work specifically on movements like your hip hinge pattern to allow you to avoid injuries before starting your kettlebell journey. That also goes with pain. If you have any pain in any of the movements or you think you may be putting yourself into a position where that may cause pain, refer yourself out to someone adequately qualified to help fix the issue before you continue your training. The final principle is quality over quantity. I want you to do a little practice called greasing the groove. Now this is applying what you learn in tiny little bits each day to allow reps to accumulate over time. Don't just go hell for leather at the training and then wind up too sore to train the next day because you simply push too hard. So a little bit over the long term will go a long way to help you develop proper kettlebell skills. All right, the kettlebell swing sometimes gets a pretty bad rap for causing lower back pain and a few issues. But if it's done and executed correctly, it's a great way to develop force production and ballistic strength. So we're gonna go through today the steps and the system to get you to a nice and safe two-handed swing and then we're gonna break out into the different variations, including some drills, and some things to remember to keep you nice and safe when you're swinging those kettlebells. So let's have a look at a few reps of the full swing and then we'll break it down into its individual stages. So there's a few reps. As you can see, it's a fast ballistic movement, but before we get to go fast, we've got to learn how to master the hip hinge pattern and the basics of the swing to put it all together. The first thing we're going to start with is our hip hinge patterning. Now, if we haven't been through the unlocking your movement section and particularly the unlocking your hinge section of that program, and you feel like you need to master the basic fundamentals of deadlifting and things like that first, I'd recommend jumping back before you jump into a move like the kettlebell swing. If we've got any pre-existing injuries to our lower back as well, make sure you're adequately cleared to start this type of training. Now revisiting our hip hinge patterning drill, we're gonna use this dowel here to maintain three points of contact on our bum, back, and head. Okay, so from here, we simply hinge into the position, maintaining those three points of contact. And as you can see, this is the bottom of our swing. We come to that top position. So remembering this nice tall position at the top, glutes are squeezed, quads are squeezed, bit of tension through the midsection as well. Sitting back into the position and coming up into that top position. So we wanna be comfortable working that hip hinge position. And if we can't get into the right position in the bottom of that hip hinge pattern, we keep working that hip hinge patterning until we can. We work out on the individual mobility level. If we have tight hammies, lower back stiffness, or anything restricting that range, make sure you address those things as you move through. A good rule of thumb here, if, if we need to try and master this hip hinge patterning, a thousand reps should get you pretty close to the money. Now, let's go through a quick drill if we can't maintain those vertical shins in our hip hinge pattern, and we can use two kettlebells here. So what we can do, doesn't matter what sizes you have, we can actually tip those bells onto their side. Grabbing the dowel again, toes come up on top of those kettlebells, Three points of contact, bum, back and head, and we're back into that pattern. 
As you can see, this helps us keep our vertical shin. So we're not quadding the movement, we are shifting our weight and loading our posterior chain. So that's a quick little drill you can you, that you can use, sorry, to help you maintain that vertical shin throughout the movement. So now that we've learnt the basics of the hip hinge pattern, let's look at putting the deadlift into the movement by adding some load. So our setup for our deadlift is obviously a little bit different to our kettlebell swing, which you'll see later on. But we want those feet right beside the bell. We want to hinge into position here. So we should be able to get our hands to that bell quite easily. If we can't, we might need to raise that bell up a little bit higher by putting it, under, putting it on top of a plate, sorry, or a raised surface to allow you to hit your hinge position. We don't want to be overreaching to the bell. We just want to be nice and strong. Hands on the bell, weight shifted on the heels, and we're driving up into that top position. We lower down, bell taps the floor, coming back up to the top. Now, practicing the swing, I want you to get in habit of using that fast drive up to the top, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the quads, and being tall at the top. Get used to moving fast through the movement. So we squat down, uh, hinge down, sorry, hands on, set our shoulders, driving fast off from the floor. It's almost like we're trying to jump off the floor. We want to be creating enough force to get into that top position. So let's quickly touch on our breathing match to the swing. Now you might have noticed through the deadlift section of this that I was breathing out of the top of the deadlift. Now, this is what's called a biomechanical breathing match and it's all about maintaining a nice safe spine and neutral spine throughout and supporting it through our diaphragmatic breath. So at the bottom of our swing, we breathe in. And at the top of our swing, we breathe out and we get tight. So it's those short and sharp breaths the, that keep spinal integrity and stops us from moving in a position where we can potentially cause ourselves injury. Now there's a few other different styles of kettlebell sport and things like that where your breathing match might be an anatomical breathing match. But for this particular element, it's all about maintaining a nice uh, safe spine and being able to generate power. So that's why we associate the top of the movement with the breath out. All right, so we've covered our deadlift um, and we've covered our breathing, our hip hinge pattern, and we're pretty solid, we're ready to move on. Now it's time to touch on the setup tips for the swing to get you in the right position from the start and the hike, which is gonna allow you to load that very first swing as opposed to starting from the top of the movement, which most people do. So. When we look at the correct setup position for the start of our swing, we want to be a foot length back from the bell. It may differ for some people here and there, but averaging a foot length back from the bell before you get your hands on the bell allows you to then shift your weight to your heels, set your shoulders, and then be loaded and safe in that start position. Let's take a look. Okay, so you've seen here that I'm a foot back from the bell. We simply jam our foot in against the bell. We line up our, heel, our toe with our heels and then we set up our other foot. From here, we hinge into the position here. From here, we probably won't be able to get to the bell. So a little bit of quadding is fine here, but then we immediately shift our weight to our heels and that bell will tip back towards ourselves. So by having the weight shift to the heels and loading the posterior chain, you're gonna be loaded the moment you hike that bell back to be able to drive through to your first swing. So there's no loss in power from the very start. So what we need to do once we hinge, hands on, set shoulders, shift the weight to our heels, we're ready for our hike. Here's what the hike looks like. Shh. 
As you can see, I'm taking that sharp breath in when the bell comes back. We keep that big chest and we find that bell in the bottom of the position of the swing. From there, it's as simple as standing up. But before we go to standing up straight away out of the swing, it takes a good amount of time to get comfortable with the pickup, but also the place down of the hike. Because a lot of the times we see when someone's ready to put the bell down, they let their shoulders round, their back rounds, and that's where the injury can occur as well. So being confident with your pickup and place down through the hike is a really useful thing to get into the right swing from the start. All right, so we've spent a lot of time getting prepared for our swing. We've mastered the deadlift, we've mastered that hip hinge patterning. We now know the start position and the pick up and place down of the bell through the hike. We're ready to start the two hand swing. Let's look again at a couple of repetitions and then we'll break down the different drills we can use to help build proficiency in our swing. So that's our two-handed swing again. Now, if we're new to swings, we want to start with dead stops or power swings. And that's just a single swing, and we place the bell straight back down on the floor once we've completed the movement. Let's have a look. So by practicing our pick up and place down and a single swing, it allows us to reinforce that safe and neutral spine without adding a lot of fatigue to the movement. You can simply start with one power swing, put the bell down, rest a little bit and shake it out. And then you can gradually build power swing on top of power swing to gauge that confidence in then being able to add multiple swings at any one time so before we fatigue the movement, you're nice and safe on the pick up and place down. And then we've got that top of the swing movement sorted. Right, so we've mastered our dead stop swings. Now, putting multiple swings together can be our next little hurdle or our next stage of evolution for our swing. So we're gonna practice top down swings. And then I've got a handy little drill. If you're one of those people that lets your bell fall down too far and we're getting ourselves in a bad position, I've got a drill that's gonna help. Let's have a look at a couple of reps of a top down swing and then we'll break it out and I'll teach you what you need to know. So as you can see, I started over the top of the bell and I deadlifted into position. This allows us to then just use a nice little hip rock and pop to let the bell swing to a height that we're comfortable with. Now, the common problems we see here is when people fall with the bell and get themselves in a rounded position. So the thing I want you to think about here is letting the bell fall as long as it can until the upper arm hits the chest, and then we're simply rushing back into position. So we keep that bell nice and high on the inner thigh, as opposed to letting it pull down and get ourselves into a bad position. Now there's a handy little trick you can do if you have another kettlebell or a dumbbell of something around shin height, this might be a useful drill. What we can do is put a bell between our legs and start our dead stop swings. If you hit that bell, you're letting that kettlebell pull you too far down. Let's take a look. Bit of 
bit awkward on the place down because you've obviously got a bell in your way there. So just be careful the way you put it down. But as you can see, I didn't come in contact with that bell between my feet, which means I'm letting the bell fall enough before I go back into that loaded movement. That's a really good tip that provides a lot of bang for your buck if you're someone that struggles with that bell pulling you to the floor, particularly once you get up in weight. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground here for our two-handed swing. And with the amount of ground we've covered, it's probably no surprise why you see people doing the movement so poorly. Let's recap on all of our key points to remember for our two-handed swing. We'll go through a few reps, we'll break it down just to reinforce the points we've learned. Now, before we get started, this is the point where you still practice. By applying a principle called greasing the groove, i.e. practice over time, you're not gonna add excessive fatigue to the movement. So until you've mastered it and you can get five, 10, 15, 20 reps out with perfect form, take your time, have plenty of rest in between your sets and make sure you focus on those cues and catch words that we're about to go through. So it's a foot length back from the bell. We hinge into position, hands on the bell, set shoulders, shift the weight to the heels. Remembering with the pick up and place down, we have our shoulders set, weight shifted to the heels, and we place the bell down the exact same way as we picked it up. You've got elements like your bell under the feet to help you keep that nice and high and letting that bell fall as long as we can before we move back into that hinge position is an important thing to remember. And the last point is our breathing. Breathing in at the bottom, sharp nasal breath. <laughs> breathing out at the top, sharp breath out through our teeth. So there you go guys, go through a few reps, grease the groove quality over quantity. Practice with plenty of rest in between and get that swing as good as you can. So we've mastered our two-handed swing. It's time to progress to our single arm swing. Now we're going to a single arm, so that means there's gonna be a lot more force trying to pull us out of position that could potentially cause us some grief. So there's gonna be more demand on the shoulders, the hips and anti-rotation. So make sure you don't have any pre-existing limitations or niggles. And if you do, go and sort those out before we move to the two-hand swing. We're gonna go through some setup tips and then some drills and practice points you can use to master that single arm swing. Let's kick off with the setup. Now, we've started with that bell on the center line of our body with our two-handed swings. If we're gonna start with our right hand, we're going to step to the left and put that bell on the right instep of our right foot. Now, having it there allows us to keep it on the inside of the right thigh. This will prevent that rotation from happening. Okay, so we're still a foot length back from the bell. And the same cues and catchwords apply. Hip hinge, hands on, set shoulders, shift the weight to your heels that bell will drag back. A word of note, if you've been doing really heavy two-handed swings, you might want to reduce the weight for your single arm swing. Obviously because we're going to a single arm, there's a lot more force required to get the bell moving. So drop down the weight as required before you do your single arm swing. Let's have a look at a couple of reps now, so then we can break down some drills and tips to remember when completing your two, uh, sorry, your single arm swing. As you can see, it looks exactly the same as your two handed swing, but this Follow arm is simply coming behind the body and driving through the position. By allowing it to mimic the position and movement, it helps keep you aligned. So you can see also, we still maintain 
that neutral spine. And we have that anti-rotation component keeping ourselves nice and tall. So if you feel like that bell's pulling you out of position, you need to make sure you're using a bell light enough that you can maintain neutral spine and without rotating out of position. Particularly down here, if we start that bell rotating us out, that's when we can cause an issue with the shoulder or our back. So making sure we're symmetrical throughout the whole entire movement will keep you nice and safe. Now, with that bell trying to pull you out of position, and we mentioned anti-rotation, a nice little cue or drill I want you to think about is forcing off the unloaded side. So by forcing hard and driving through the foot on that unloaded side, that's gonna create force from this side to allow you to even out the movement. So when we're here, we emphasize that drive through the foot to make sure we're not just coming across the body. Remembering that bell hits the inner thigh of the side we're swinging, driving up hard off the leg that's unloaded. Let's have a look. That should help that anti-rotation and keeping you nice and safe throughout the movement. Let's have a look at the switch now. Now the switch needs to just be an easy pass between hands throughout our swings. So you can either go back to placing that bell down if you're not quite confident, or we can practice swinging into the movement. So let's start from the left hand side now. And we can simply just build this drill by switching every single swing. Don't worry about height. Worry about getting that nice, strong top position and an easy change between the hands. And we can place down. So by focusing just on those easy swings with that switch, we'll get confident with our single arm swings with our switches in between. So then we can go to 10 reps one side, switch our hands, 10 reps the other, and it becomes more of an efficient exercise. All right, so we've started our journey with kettlebells and we only have a single bell. It's probably getting a little bit too light with the amount we're learning how to swing and we're getting quite confident, but we don't want to invest in more kettlebells just yet we can use a band. Now a band we can attach to this kettlebell and do some over eccentric kettlebell swings. This is gonna help our speed production through the movement and it's a quick way to add perceived weight to a lighter bell if we've only got a single bell at home to use. So to attach this band to the bell, we simply loop it back on itself, pulling it through and we keep that band grouped nice and tight in the center of the bell. Now this will affect your grip. So it's really good to obviously use these types of swings to help him improve our pop out of the swing. And it also gives us a little bit of extra perceived weight if we have a light bell, but you might find issues with holding on to it for multiple reps. So keep the reps in a range that you can control the bell with this band in the way. So once we're here, we simply stand over the bell, stand over the band, sorry, and we keep the midline of our foot over the top of that band. We can then pick that bell up like so, or we can start from the hike position. Now remember you've got an external force on the bell, so it may feel a little bit weird, and make sure you're nice and safe in that neutral spine before you begin. Let's have a look at a couple of reps. So as you can see, that bell's gonna pull you faster down into the bottom position. So making sure we really emphasize that fall and that rush back to dynamically load that hinge pattern is super important so you don't have that bell pull you to the floor. Give that a go for five to 10 reps. It's awesome if you're obviously at home with a single bell and then 
Once you've maxed that out, it's time to buy more bells to increase your kettlebell swing.